Hi, Gara. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you? I'm good too. So, uh, thank you for joining me today for the new episode of Simple Talk series. For those who are watching this for the first time, I would like to take a few seconds to briefly tell our audience about the series. So, series is an avenue for me to speak to leaders candidly on subjects such as leadership, organization culture, technology and design. Today we will be talking about how to work effectively with globally distributed remote teams. But before we jump into the conversation, Kara, can you quickly introduce yourself to our audience? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Kara Hecker, and I'm a product lead within Simpress Technology. I've been with the company for a little bit over five years, and I'm really passionate about product management. So that's kind of my focus. But obviously, um, we're a technology company, tech first, and, and I'm very passionate about that industry in general. Um, and I'm really excited to be here today. So thank you for having me. Thank you. So that was great. And now we can jump into the conversation. So I would like to begin with a very basic question. What do you exactly mean by globally distributed teams? And what is it that really excites you about it? Yeah, so when we talk about globally distributed teams, this is something that Simpress has been doing for a long time, just by nature of our organization. So um, it's, you know, working with people across the globe who work in, we used to have satellite offices or offices distributed. So we had a Waltham office, we had one in Zurich, we opened one in Prague, we had one in Mumbai, or two in Mumbai, um, and recently opened one in Bangalore. So I think that's kind of the obvious, um, you know, globally distributed team, people working together on a common goal all over the globe. And so that's kind of what I think about when I, when I think about global, um, you know, global distributed teams. And in terms of what's exciting about it, I think there's a few different things. One for me is, is a personal interest and kind of passion, um, travel. I love traveling. I love learning about people, cultures, countries. And so it's even something I studied in undergraduate was international relations. So this is something that is close to my heart. And so I think that from a personal perspective, it excites me to work with people all, all over the globe. And it also, I think, is great for the company and the work that we do, given the nature of the Simbris businesses that we've acquired over the past, um, you know, five, six, seven years are also globally distributed. And so it's an advantage, I think, I mean, exciting to have team members across the globe that are partnering with some of our businesses um, that are also globally distributed. All right. So how much time have you spent with globally distributed teams and According to you and your experience, what have been the top challenges and benefits of working with these teams? So Simpress is my first experience working with truly globally distributed teams. So as I mentioned, I've been here a little over five years. And in the beginning, the team was more co-located. So we spent a lot more time working with colleagues in the Waltham area on the East Coast. Um, so I'd say the past three years or so, the strategy for Simpress has really shifted. And the, we've really started hiring in global locales. And that's become a higher kind of focus. So I'd say that I've had team members and squads that are globally distributed for the past two, a little bit over two years. Um, and then in the past year, obviously with COVID and the changes of everyone working remotely, hiring strategies changed in a little bit. Um, so, so just a few years, really, I've been working with the globally distributed teams. And in terms of some of the top challenges, I think that one of the most obvious ones that is worth calling out is time zones. I think that it's challenging when you have a team that operates, at, you know, in my case, across, I think, four time zones. So we have the West Coast in the United States, the East Coast, and we have Central European time zone with our, our team members in the Zurich area, and then in India as well. So that can just be a challenge. I know that we're moving to more asynchronous communication, writing things down, and that makes it easier. Um, but there's some things that are just better or easier and, and you know better to build rapport when you have that kind of face-to-face zoom-to-zoom conversation. Okay so uh, how much time have you spent working with the uh, globally distributed team and according to you and your experience what have been the top challenges and benefits of working with them? So Simpress is actually the first company I've worked with where I've had a truly globally distributed team that I've been working with. When I joined a little over five years ago, we were kind of partnering with some of the newly acquired businesses. So that was my first exposure to working with globally distributed teams, but actually having squads and team members that were working together with me at the time within my tribe, that was probably the past two or two and a half years. Um, a little bit time now, but obviously this past year has been very intensive working with globally distributed teams, especially in a remote setting. Um, so definitely a few years of experience now. And in 
terms of some of the top challenges, I think that the biggest challenge is really the time zone differences. So when you have people working across four, even five time zones, and you have, you know, things that you want to discuss or just want to have some social interaction or build a rapport, that can be really challenging with a team that is so widely distributed. And I think that there's a lot that we can achieve asynchronously and writing things down and documentation, but really getting that one-on-one time or team time kind of live is really, really critical. So that, that can be a challenge. I think that another challenge is potentially around just differences in styles of working, communication styles, you know, different countries, different cultures have different ways of working. And they're just, um, you know, people need to be patient and, and take the time to learn those different styles. And I think, you know, one specific example that I have here, when I first started working with a colleague really closely in India, um, another leader, we were kind of thought partners, and we would have very lively debates and discussions, um, share each other's ideas. And for the most part, we agreed, but I was just so confused in the beginning, because he would constantly kind of be what I perceived as like shaking his head. And I, and in the US, it's very common that a head shake means like no, and a nod would mean yes. And he was kind of doing this head thing. And I was like, he sounds like he agrees with me, but he's shaking his head. Like, I'm not sure how to interpret this. And I know that's probably a silly example to you, but at the time I had never had exposure working or talking face to face with an Indian colleague. And um, I came to learn that, you know, there's a lot of literature out there about the, like the head wobble or bobble or whatever it's referred to as, but that it, that gesture was something I hadn't seen before and had to kind of learn the nuances of, okay, is he agreeing? Is he disagreeing? Like, is this going well? Um, so I think that's kind of a silly example, but there's challenges like that with every, you know, business I've worked with in France and Germany and the Netherlands, there's different communication styles or things that, um, you know, you might not be familiar with as an individual and just have to take the time to learn learn a little bit more about those communication styles. So um, that's somewhat of a challenge, but for me, it's kind of an exciting one because that's part of getting to know your colleagues and, and learning about other cultures. In terms of the benefits, I think there's a lot of benefits um, to working both kind of tactically, but also from a personal level. So tactically speaking, I think that having globally distributed teams, um, you know, you have broader coverage. So we have businesses all over the world that we serve and having teams that are also all over the world means that from a time zone perspective, that's where it can actually be an advantage. Because if we have team or customers who need support, um, we have teams pretty much covering almost a 24 hour period in terms of being available for our customers and supporting them. I think that it also brings uh, you know, a lot of diverse perspectives. So being able to hire, especially now in a remote first strategy, literally anywhere on the globe, um, really provides a different level of um, skills. People are coming from different backgrounds, different experiences, and it kind of broadens the, the recruitment pool. So especially in Boston, when we first kind of opened this strategy, um, it was really a saturated market. It was hard to find really talented engineers within the Boston market. And so expanding to first, you know, the Winterthur office in, in Switzerland and then on to India and Prague, I mean, now kind of literally anywhere, that's been huge in terms of being able to find, recruit and retain top talent. So I think that's, that's definitely a benefit. And then I touched upon this before, but uh, personally, I love um, traveling. I love learning about other people and their culture and where they're from. And, and so I think that's a benefit for all of us is that exposure that we might not have otherwise. Yeah, I think we are, uh, I remember in my school days and when I first started reading about the process of globalization, the first thing other than the economic benefits and everything, the political theorists said that we'll become global citizens in some time, once the global globalization fashion. And I think now we are somewhat there. We can actually think or consider ourselves as the global citizens. It definitely builds a, a different level of empathy when you have yeah. colleagues all over the versus reading something that's a little bit more abstract in the news, for example. Right. Okay, so uh, kind of basis your experience, what would you suggest as the tips and tricks of working effectively in a global remote team? I think this is something that we're still learning and, and you know, gaining skills in, and there's been a lot of focus and training around how to have uh, remote effectiveness in general. And then there's that added kind of complexity of being globally distributed. But things that I think I found that have worked um, and that are, are good tactics include really just writing down norms and expectations. And I think being really clear about the expectation for how a team will work together, 
um, can help that just be more successful in terms of forming and norming the, the team culture and how everyone's working and supporting each other. I think that, you know, in terms of documentation, the more that can be done asynchronously and read and consumed and responded to you without needing that times and overlap, I think is a huge benefit and definitely is a tip or trick in terms of working more effectively. And then coming back again to that idea of setting expectations, that's really important. So I know that when I'm trying to contribute to a document, whether it's in Confluence or somewhere else that we're collaborating, you know, being really clear around, okay, you know, I'm looking for feedback within a week and I'll be responding to your comments actively when I see, like just something as simple as that um, can reduce that, that potential friction of, oh, well, I commented and Kara didn't respond and I don't know why, or, oh, she said, told me to look at it, um, but I didn't know that she needed it within a few days. And those are kind of small, maybe contrived examples, but I think that those small things are really important to being successful and working well together. So, you know, the biggest thing is really writing things down, trying to be asynchronous when you can, um, and then I think a, another big tip is taking the time to build the rapport, have some of those one-on-one -on -one conversations, because if you're able to do that, um, especially in the beginning of a, a working relationship, you avoid or reduce the chance of some of that miscommunication that can happen when you're working in a globally distributed team and don't have a lot of face-to-face -face time. Right. Okay, so um, how do you see the evolution of the globally distributed teams? Any trends that uh, you might want to quote in terms of its future? I think that we'll only continue to see it grow. I think that with the, you know, the pandemic, it kind of forced companies into this environment where they had their employees be remote. And that really opened up opportunities to be able to hire anywhere and even extend that global distribution, that idea of globally distributed teams and push the envelope kind of even further to say, wow, you know, if we can work from home within the context of the offices or the home locations, the home office locations we had, can we hire anywhere? And I think that that will be a trend that will only continue, especially in the technology industry where we have, you know, the advantage of being able to work from our computers. I think that we'll see that, that trend continue. And then I also think other industries might adopt it as well because there's advantages from a cost perspective, not having as much real estate. Again, I mentioned the access to a broader talent pool for recruitment. And um, I think we will we'll continue to see that trend grow over, over the coming year. Okay. I would say we will continue to become truly uh, digital nomads in the near future. Yes, I would love to see that happen and see it happen in practice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Akara, do you think it can add like um, working in globally distributed teams or generally the trend of globally distributed teams can add on to the organization's goal of becoming more diverse and inclusive? I think it absolutely can. I, I mentioned a few times that being able to hire from anywhere and kind of get a, a broader pool of candidates and not limited to any geographic location, um, by nature is going to provide a more diverse pool. I do think that we have to be really intentional about it. I think that if we expect just because we are a globally distributed team and that's our recruitment strategy, it's not just going to happen that we get a more diverse um, you know, population within our, our workforce and that it becomes more inclusive without taking steps and actions to ensure our recruitment practices, the funnel we're looking at, the interview practices that we have, um, focusing on, you know, diversity and inclusion within the company for, for retention and attracting talent. There's steps we need to take. It's not just going to happen because we are a globally distributed team. So I absolutely think there's a, a big opportunity here to help our organization become more diverse and inclusive, but it will take um, continued steps from the company and us as individuals to really see that through and, and make sure that it's successful. Yeah, I, I agree with that. So uh, lastly, I would like to close the conversation by uh, asking you, how has working with globally distributed teams added to your personality? Can you share some personal anecdotes here? Looking forward to something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I, I definitely, you know, as I've shared a few times, I'm super passionate about like globalization. I know that's a term you used, um, you know, international travel and experiences and cultures and everything like that. So for me personally, I think that you know, I love working in an environment where I have the opportunity to meet people from all over the world, to understand, um, you know, the businesses that they run or their way of working. And, you know, I, I like to make personal connections with my colleagues as well. So 
to learn about their personal lives. Um, I think that that's, that's really fun and exciting for me when I've traveled for work, visiting different offices for Simpress or visiting our businesses in France or Germany, Switzerland, the Netherlands, you know, it's really a great opportunity to get to know people even better. And so I hope that we'll all return to that model for those who are kind of new joiners, um, you know, and haven't had the opportunity to travel yet, it will come. And, um, you know, I think that that's huge and has affected me in many ways. I had never been to Europe before I worked for, for Simpress. Um, and so I think being able to have that level of exposure and those opportunities are great. I think that something else that, you know, I've learned is um, food really is the universal language. So it, it, through my travels and having people come and visit the, the Waltham office um, before the pandemic, I've tried a lot of new foods, especially sweets. I have tried a lot of Indian sweets. I've tried a lot of Swiss chocolate, had a lot of Stroop waffle from the Netherlands. So, you know, I think that it's a, and then of course shared a lot of great meals with, with colleagues and friends who have had the opportunity to travel and meet each other. Um, so I think that personally, you know, it's added to my life, really having this opportunity to work in a globally distributed team um, and just has been a really positive influence on, on my outlook, building that empathy. And I'm really thankful for the opportunity to kind of work in this type of environment. Okay. I, I feel like someone's speaking like about me, about the food part. I'm so passionate about food. <laughs> and that's something if I, if I were in your show, I would say the same thing, except that sweets part, I'm more of a spice person. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think of, I have a sweet tooth, so I definitely I, I love trying the sweets from around the world and um, spice. I just can't handle it. I I have a little bit of spice and I start sweating everywhere. So I enjoy it, but I, you know, sweets is really where my heart is. Okay. Okay. So um, thank you so much, Kara. It was really lovely and delightful speaking to you on this and. Thank you for giving me this very really lively and interesting conversation. I enjoyed speaking to you. Thank thoroughly. you for the opportunity, Divya. It was great speaking with you and, um, you know, best of luck. Thank you. And uh, I hope our audience also loves this conversation. So I would like to take a moment to let people know that we at Simpress are also hiring across levels and uh, they can also be a part of this amazing global team. And they can check out our job section on the LinkedIn. So on this note, thank you again and take care until we see each other. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.